بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم this is the 12th lecture of numerical analysis uh, as you saw in previous cases that we talked about the replacement of data by smooth and continuous curves and then doing the interpolations now if we having the data points then we will like to find out derivative of the function at the data points so today topic is uh, related with the numerical differentiation we are having data and we want to replace the data uh, we, we want to find out derivative at the data points of the function without knowing the function so let's see Uh, this chapter is chapter number 4 and of course chapter number 4 is about the numerical differentiation and integration but let's focus on the dif numerical differentiation first so there are different formulas 2 point formula 3 point formula 5 point formula I'm going for the derivation of the 2 point formula so let's assume we are having two data points x0 f of x0 x1 f of x1 and uh, x1 minus x0 is equal to h it means that x1 is equal to x0 plus h which is which is not zero and as we assume that the function is uh, continuous along with its first order and second order derivative so if you are having two data points then you already know that Lagrange polynomial is given by this expression. I will not be, will not be going to the further detail of the Lagrange polynomials because, because already you did that. You can see this is Lagrange coefficient corresponding to x0 and that's the reason you can't see x minus x0 in the numerator. Similarly, this corresponds to x is equal to x1. So you can't see x minus x1 in the numerator. And uh, in the denominator, we replace this x by x0. So in this case, we replace x by x1. This is the error term. So of course, second order derivative of the function will exist. Otherwise, we can't talk about the Lagrange polynomial here. This eta is the function of x. We don't have, we don't know the explicit relation for this eta, but we know that this eta lies between x0 and x1. And whenever we are talking about upper bound of our error, so we are selecting eta in such a way that in this case second order derivative of the function is absolutely maximum since the target is to find out two point formula of differentiation so we differentiate this function with respect to x and let's state forward i differentiated this with respect to x you can see f of x naught divided by x minus x naught is a constant and the derivative of x minus x1 is equal to 1. So we have this term. Similarly, f of x1 divided by x1 minus x0 is constant. And the derivative of x minus x0 is equal to 1. You can see the term over here. Now if you look at this term, there are three terms containing x. So I will split this into two parts this will be one part and that will be another part so i see that uh, this function which is here multiply by derivative of this function so this is the product of two functions and uh, the derivative of x minus x1 is zero uh, sorry x minus x1 is one so one multiply by x minus x naught which appears here plus the derivative of x minus x naught is 1. So 1 multiplied by x minus x1, which you can see over here. Plus this term, 
multiply by derivative of this function. So I, you can see the derivative of this function. By chain rule, you can see that this can be f for triple order derivative of eta multiply by d eta by dx. But remember, since we don't know explicit relation for eta, so we are in trouble here. And that's the reason. And if you look at the conditions uh, while uh, writing this function in terms of the Lagrange polynomial, we are saying that function is differentiable up to second order derivative, it's continuous up to second order derivative. So I, I'm not sure about the third order derivative of the function. So that will be another problem which will come here. And that is the reason we can't find out derivative of the function for all values of x. But when I replace x by x0 and x by x1, so this portion which creates the problem for me, that becomes a zero. So I can conclude that we can find out the derivative of the function at the data points. So when I replace x by x0, so what will happen to this expression? This will be f prime of x0 f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1, this is constant. So I don't need to replace any value. Similarly, this is constant. So I'm writing that again. But if I come to this one, I don't know explicit relation for eta in terms of x, so to replace uh, x by x0. So that's the reason I have written it over here. That's hidden, remember x is hidden here and when we replace x by x0 this will become 0 and this will become x0 minus x1 which you can see here and this term becomes 0. Now since you know that x1 minus x0 is equal to h so let us use this value so x0 minus x1 is equal to minus h x1 minus x0 will become h and x0 minus x1 is equal to minus h. So this is the, the simplified form of the derivative of the function at x is equal to x0. And if we take 1 over h common, so we can write in this form. x0 plus h is the value of x1, which you already know. Now this is the two-point formula for differentiation. So this will give you approximated value of the derivative of the function at x is equal to x0 and this will give you the error term eta using for upper bound of the error. We have to select eta in such a way that second order derivative of the function is absolutely maximum between x0 and x1. This formula is called the forward difference formula. Of course, the value of h is positive. Now, what will happen when I replace x by x1? So, this is the previous for, uh, expression y, which I reproduced. And this is the formula which we derived when x was x0. Now, let us substitute x is equal to x1 in this expression. So you can see now x0 minus x1 this is there because we don't have x this is there we don't have x and when x is equal to x1 this portion will become 0 and this will become x1 minus x0 and multiply by this term. At x is equal to x1 this part will become a 0. And again if you use x1 minus x0 is equal to h, so the alternate form is given by because x0 minus x1 is minus h, x1 minus x0 is h, and x1 minus x0 is equal to h. x1 is equal to x0 plus h. Ah, I can write when I take 1 over h common. So this is the approximated value of the derivative of the function and this is the error term. 
Now I want to focus on a point. I would like to use this as a x naught instead of x naught plus h. So what I am doing, I am replacing x naught plus h by x naught. So definitely x naught plus h will replace by x naught. But what will happen to x naught? Let's look at this figure. This is the position. This particle lies at x naught plus h. This lies at x naught and this lies at x naught minus h. If I shift these particles to the left hand side so that x naught plus h reaches up to this position. So at this position the value of x is x naught. So when I shift this to the left hand side, so this particle is now at x naught. It means that I replace x naught plus h by x naught. So you can see that we will replace x naught by x naught minus h. You can see that this coincide with this one. And uh, the coordinate of this point is x naught minus h. So what will happen to your formula? You will have x naught plus x h. x naught plus h is replaced by x naught which appears over here. 1 over h x naught plus h is x naught minus you can see that uh, this was originally x naught but now this is x naught minus h if you look at these two. So that's the reason I replace this x naught by x naught minus h. Again this is approximated value of the derivative and this is a error term. If I take a negative sign common so I will have 1 over minus h f of x naught minus h minus f of x naught and that will remain is unchanged. Now this formula is called the backward difference formula. Let's focus on this formula and this formula. What is the difference between the two? When I replace h by minus h this will become 1 over h. This will become x naught plus h and you can see it coincide with these two values. That will remain and when I replace h by minus h so that will remain this one. So you can see in reality these two formulas are identical but h has been replaced by minus h and if you remember I told you that whenever we are talking about the derivative of a function at a particular point we can use the forward as well as the backward difference. So in this case you can see that the backward difference has been used in this case the forward difference has been used that's the reason this is called the backward formula and this is called the forward formula. So what I will, will conclude, I conclude that derivative of the function at a point x naught is given by this expression and we are allowed to replace h by minus h. Why we are saying that we are replacing h by minus h that will become clear to you in the example because you will face a problem where x naught plus h will not be available in your data. That's the reason we will be replacing h by minus h. So I will say that this is just one formula uh, which this one, yeah this one both are equivalent and these are called the two point formulas for differentiation. Let us consider an example. The example is we are given a function f of x is equal to e raised to the power x and x naught is given to you and the question is find out the derivatives at x naught when h is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001 and 0 0.0001 and also determine bounds for the errors. So what I have f of x naught so replace x by 0 
we are getting this value. This is the value of f of 0 0.5. This was the formula which we derived right now. And if you look at the formula, you need to find out f of x naught plus h. This term is available. We have to find out this value. So there will be different cases for different values of h. You will have different values. This is the formula. This is the approximated value which I reproduced over here. This is your error term. Error term is given by this quantity. As I told you, our interest lies in absolutely large value. And uh, uh, e raised to the power x, you can see that uh, all the derivatives of e raised to the power x are e raised to the power x. So that's the reason since this is the function of eta, so I replace x by eta. Now, if you look at this e raised to the power eta, yeah, e raised to the power x, this is exponential function and it increases. So the value of eta lies between x naught and x naught plus h. So its maximum value will be at the largest point. So e raised to the power of eta is a less or equal to y because I replace eta by largest value and this will be overall the largest value. So we can say that this is upper bound of the error in the computation of a prime of x naught. So let's uh, see that uh, what are the derivatives and what are the upper bounds in different cases when h is equal to 0 0.1 so f of x naught plus h will be f of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.6 f of 0 0.6 replace x by 0 0.6 and you are getting this value now f of x naught plus h is known f of x naught is known and the value of h is known. So substitute value in this formula and your approximated value of the derivative at 0 0.5 is given by this value when the step size is 0 0.1. Similarly, let's come to the upper bound. Replace h by 0 0.1. x naught is 0 0.5 and h is 0 0.1 so when you substitute the value you are getting this value and this is the upper bound of the error in this case now let's see when h is equal to 0 0.01 so again find out this value x naught is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.01 it means that this is 0 0.51. Replace x by 0 0.51 over here and you will be getting the corresponding value. Now f of x naught plus h is known, which is this value. f of x naught is known, which is uh, you can put it over here. And the value of h is 0 0.01. So your approximated derivative at 0 0.5 is given by this value. And upper bound of error in this case, replace h by 0.01, x naught by 0.5, and again h by 0.01. So this is upper bound of your error in this case. When the value of h is 0.001, so this will this value this will be f of 0.5 plus 0.001 which is equal to 0 0.501 and replace x by 5.01 over here you are getting this value now this value minus f of x naught divided by h gives you approximated value of the derivative of the function at 0 0.5 when h is 0 0.001 for upper bounds Replace this h by 0.001, x naught by 0.5, h by 0.001. And this will give you the upper bound of the error. Similarly, if I use h is equal to 0.0001, f of 
0.5 plus 0.0001 which is uh, 0.5001 replace x by 0.5001 you are getting this value this value minus f of 0.5 divided by h which is 0.0001 this is approximated value of the derivative of the function and for upper bound replace h by 0.0001 x naught by 0.5 and h by 0.0001 this will be upper bound of the f and if you look at this table now, when we are decreasing the step size, the upper bound of the error is decreasing. You are getting more accurate answer. And if you look at this column, you can see that when we are going ahead, so the number of decimal places become. So when we decrease it further, so we are expecting that accuracy will be increasing. So this is the example when x0 is given to you and for different values of h you are computing derivative of the function with the help of the two point formula at x is equal to x0. Just the matter of calculation, the rest I think it's straight forward. Let's consider another case, another example. Approximate first derivative of the function at each data point. This is your uh, data. This time, I don't have the function, but I have values of the function. So remember, we will not be in the position to find out upper bound of the error in this case because function is not known. We have to find out the derivative at 1, at 1.1, 1 .1, at 1.2, at 1.3, at 1.4. And if you look at these entries, the difference between two consecutive numbers is 0.1. So the strip size in this problem is given by 0.1. Formula, again the same formula which we used before. So let's find out. Remember in this formula x0 is the point at which you are computing derivative of the function. Means that when you are computing derivative at 1, so x0 is 1. When you are computing derivative at 1.1, then x0 is 1.1. When you are computing derivative at 1.2, x0 is 1.2 and so on. So let's see. The derivative at 1.0 so the value of x naught in this formula is 1.0 so h is known x naught is 1.0 so 1 plus 0 0.1 is 1.1 and that's the reason i used f of 1.1 minus f of x naught 1.0 divided by h which is there f of 1.1 is this value f of 1 is this value, substitute the value over here and uh, then simplify it. So this is the approximated value of the derivative at x is equal to 1.0. Now let's switch to 1.1. 1.1 x naught is 1.1. So 1.1 plus 0.1 is 1.2. f of 1.2, which you can see over here, minus f of 1.1 divided by h. f of 1.2 is there, f of 1.1 is there, and the value of h is there. So substitute the value. So this value and minus this value, this value minus this value divided by h. And this is approximated value of the function. 1.1. Now let's come to 1.2. I am computing it 1.2. So it means that in this formula the value of x0 is 1.2. So 1.2 plus 0.1 is 1.3. That's the reason you can see f of 1.3 minus f of x0 which is 1.2 divided by h and uh, 
f of 1.3 is there, f of 1.2 is there, the value of h is there. So this is approximated value of the function at x is equal to 1.2. Now let's come to the next point, 1.3. So remember in this case the value of x0 is 1.3 now. So 1.3 plus 0 0.1 is 1.4, which you can see over there minus f of x0 divided by h, f of 1.4 minus f of 1.3 divided by h gives you approximated value of the function. Now, if I'm going for 1.4, so the value of x0 will be 1.4. So 1.4 plus 0 0.1 is 1.5. Remember, it's not available in the data. So this form of the formula is not working. So I told you that you can replace h by minus h. So let's replace h by minus h. So you can see this will become minus h. This will become x naught minus h. That will remain the same. Uh, h by minus h. So this will become plus. So this is the error. And this is the approximated value of the function. Now, if I take x naught as 1.4, so this will give me 1.4 minus 0 0.1, which is 1.3. It is available there. That's the reason we are using this alternate form of the formula where h has, in, has been replaced by minus h. x naught minus h will be 1.4 minus 0 0.1 is 1.3 minus f of x naught divided by minus h and this gives you the same value. You can see these two values are the same. Here I use the backward formula and here I use the forward formula. And the reason is that the values we are getting are the same. Remember, if you are using this formula, you can use this formula for 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1. But if you are going for 1, it is not working because 1 minus 0 0.1 is not available in your data. So this is working for all these derivatives except the first one. And this one is working for all derivatives all each, all, at all these points except the end point. So that's the reason we replace h by minus s h and I told you that we are allowed to do so. So you saw that how you can use the two-point formula to find out derivative of the function at the data points. Let's consider another case, so three-point formulas. So when I say three point, so there should be three points. You can see x i f of x i i is 0, 1, 2. So there are three points, x naught f of x naught, x1 f of x1, x2 f of x2. The data is equally spaced. Remember these formulas are for equally spaced data. If the data is not equally spaced, so this form is not the suitable form you have to derive another form. So in your book we are focusing on the equally spaced data. You are having three points. Lagrange polynomial you can find out polynomial of degree 2 at the most. Look at this one. This uh, term correspond to x is equal to x naught, so you can't see x minus x naught in numerator, which was the uh, requirement of the Lagrange coefficients, if you remember. This correspond to x is equal to x1, so you can't see x minus x1 in the numerator. This correspond to x is equal to x2, you can't see x minus x2 in the denominator. And in this case, replace x by x naught, write that in the denominator. In this case, replace x by x1, write that in the denominator. Replace x by x2, write that in the denominator. So this is the polynomial of degree 2 if you simplify it. Of course, when we are doing this approximation, we are having the error term. And error term is given by this expression, which you already know.
<coughs> the target is to find out the derivative of the function. So let's uh, differentiate this function. But before that, what I use the value of h. x1 minus x0 is h. So this is minus h. x0 minus x2 is minus 2h. Uh, rest are the same. This will be x1 minus x0 is h. x1 minus x2 is minus h. Uh, rest is the same plus x2 minus x0 is 2h x2 minus x1 is uh, h uh, rest are the same plus the error term so find out the derivative of the function differentiate with respect to x when you differentiate this with respect to x so this is the constant term so x there the product of two functions, so derivative of x minus x2 is 1, so I have x minus x1 only plus the derivative of x minus x1 is 1, so I have x minus x2 there. Similarly, this is constant term which you can see over here. Multiply by the derivative of x minus x2 is 1, so multiply by x minus x0 which you can see here plus x minus x0 into x minus x2 into derivative of x minus x0 is 1. So you can see the term over here. Similarly, this is constant. The derivative of x minus x1 is 1. So I have x minus x0 plus the derivative of x minus x0 is 1. So I have x minus x1 here. Look at this term. Uh, one term second, third, fourth. So there are four terms to find out the derivative. I don't know explicit relation for eta. But remember x is hidden here. You can use the chain rule. Possible. So this function which is here multiply by derivative of this function. So there are three functions. So I'm using the product rule. The derivative of this is 1 multiply by these two factors which you can see over here plus the derivative of x minus x1 is 1 multiply by x minus x0 into x minus x2 which you can see over here plus the derivative of x minus x2 is 1 multiply by x minus x0 and x minus x1 which you can see over here. So I differentiated this multiply by this one plus this portion multiply by derivative of this function which you can see I have written over here. This can be written as a fourth order derivative of eta multiply by d eta by dx. Since I don't know about the expression of eta in terms of x so I am facing the problem. And another point when we are computing this Lagrange polynomial so the restriction is that uh, third order derivative of the function should exist and function should be continuous along with its derivatives. So I can see that when I am computing the fourth order derivative, I am not sure whether that derivative will exist or not. So this is the problematic term. But if, so that's the reason I can't find out the derivative of the function for all values of x. But if I replace x by x0, this portion becomes 0 x by x1, so this will become 0, x by x2, so this will become 0. Means that at the data points, the problematic term will become 0. And that's the reason we can find out derivatives at the data points. Let's see, at x is equal to, so I reproduce that expression, that derivative. Now let's replace x by x naught. Remember this is constant term which is there. This will be x naught minus x1. This will be x naught minus x2. Plus uh, this is constant. x naught minus x naught and x naught minus x2. Plus this is constant. Multiply by x naught minus x naught and x naught minus x1. Let's come to this. 
x is equal to x naught, this term will become 0. This term will become 0, x naught minus x naught. The only term which survive is this one, x naught minus x1 and x naught minus x2. The rest of the terms becomes here. And similarly, x is equal to x naught, so this completely becomes here. x naught minus x1 is equal to minus h, x naught minus x2 is minus 2h. This is 0, x naught minus x2 is minus 2h. This is 0, x naught minus x1 is minus h. Minus h, minus 2h, and the rest of the two terms are the same. And if we simplify this one, we are getting the formula at x is equal to x naught. Minus 3h, so 1h will cancel, minus 3 divided by 2h, f of x naught. This h will cancel with this h, so you have minus and minus plus. 2h divided by f uh, multiplied by f of x1. This h and this h will cancel. So minus 1 over 2h f of x2. Minus and minus plus plus 2 h square so 2 will cancel here. So h square divided by 3 triple order derivative of the function. And if I take 1 over 2h common, so I have minus 3 f of x0 plus 4 f of x1. Uh, minus f of x2. So x2 is x0 plus 2h, x1 is x0 plus h, x0 is x0. And uh, this eta lies between x0 and x0 plus 2h. Again, this is the error term using for upper bound of the error. So we have a lot of questions in the medical analysis uh, about this one. So I will not go for detail further here. So this is a formula and this formula is called, called three point and point formula. Now let us look at x is equal to x1. So I uh, reproduce the term where we have to replace x, y, x1. So when we replace x, y, x1, so x1 minus x1, x1 minus x2, x1 minus x0, x1 minus x2, x1 minus x0, x1 minus x1 plus x1 minus x1, x1 minus x2, which you can see here, x1 minus x0, x1 minus x2, which is, you can see here, x1 minus x0, x1 minus x1, you can see here. And of course, this becomes 0, x1 minus x1. Now you can simplify it. x1 minus x1, this is 0. x1 minus x2 is minus h. x1 minus x0 is h. x1 minus x2 is minus h. x1 minus uh, x0 is h. And this is 0. Which you can see h over here. Uh, this is 0. This is 0. So this will be x1 minus x0, which is h, multiplied by x1 minus x2, which is minus 2h. And if you simplify it, you are getting h minus h. So this term becomes 0. This h will cancel with this h. And this h will cancel with this h. So 1 minus 1 divided by 2h, f of x0, or plus f of x2 divided by 2h plus the error term. So this will be minus h square divided by 6 triple order derivative of the function. Now you can see that this is, I have taken 1 over 2h common. So this will give you approximated value at x is equal to x1 and this will be the corresponding error term. This formula is called the midpoint formula. This is the formula which we derived right now. I am focusing on this x1 because I, I would like to see in every formula the same point here. So that's the reason I would like to replace this x1 by x0. 
when I replace x1 by x0, so definitely x0 will replace by x0 minus h and x2 will replace by x1 so because we are moving in backward direction by one step. So let's see how. Look at these two figures. You can see that uh, the position of this particle is x0 plus 2h x0 plus h, x0, x0 minus h and x0 minus 2h. What I want to do, I want this x0 to be at this position. So I shifted this, uh, these particles to the left hand side. So x0 shifted to x0. x0 plus h is x1. So x1 shifted to x0. x1 shifted to x0. Accordingly, x0 will shift to x0 minus h position. And x0 minus h will shift to x0 minus 2h. So one step in backward direction. So this value is the same as this value. This value is the same as this value. This is the same as this value. This is the same as this value. Same as this value. Let us look at this formula. x1 shifted to x0 x2 shifted to x0, x1, x2, x2 shifted to x1. That's the reason I'm writing x0 plus h and x0 shifted to x0 minus h. That's the reason you can see it over here. This is the same. So the value of h lies between x0 minus h and x0 plus h in this situation. Now, what is x0 in this case? In this case, uh, uh, x1 is the point which lies at the second position. But remember this x0 is the point at which you want to find out the derivative of the function. So it will make the thing simple for you. Let's see what happens when we replace x by x2. So again, I reproduce the same expression so that the things become simple in your understanding. Let's replace x by x2. When we replace x by x2, so what happens? x replaced by x2, uh, constants will be there. This will be x2 minus x1, x2 minus x2, constant that is there x1 x2 minus x0 x2 minus x2 this is constant which is there x2 minus x0 and x2 minus x1 what will happen to the error term that will be there uh, i don't know the explicit relation for eta so that's why i can't substitute x is equal to x0 over here but we will be talking about absolute value of this term. x2 minus x1, x2 minus x2, x2 minus x0, x2 minus x2, x2 minus x0, and x2 minus x1. And of course, this term will become zero because of x2 minus x2. Let's uh, simplify it. x2 minus x1 is h. This will be 0. x2 minus uh, x0 is 2h, which is there. This will be 0. x2 minus x0 is uh, 2h, which is there. x2 minus x1 is h, which is there. This is 0. This is 0 because of this term. This will be x2 minus x0, which is 2h, and x2 minus x1, which is equal to h. This h will cancel with this h. This h will cancel with this one. So you are getting only h. This will be 3h. So h will cancel. 3 divided by 2 h x2. So you can see that this is the the formula when you are computing the derivative at the third point but I would like to get rid of this confusion
this is the term we got so what i'm doing like previously let's replace this x2 by x0 so it means that i'm shifting x2 to x0 so x0 will shift to another point and x1 will shift to another point x2 shift to x0 x1 shift to x0 minus h and x0 shifted to x0 minus 2h how exactly in the similar fashion as we discussed before position of the particle you can see both are the same but i shifted this particle to the position of x0 i shifted so i shifted this complete slot to the left hand side so x2 has been shifted to x0 so similarly x1 will shift to x0 minus 1 and x0 will shift to x0 minus 2h and similarly x0 minus h will shift to x0 minus 3h x0 minus 2h will shift to x0 minus 4h so what will, what will be the form of your formula x2 has been replaced by x0 x0 has been replaced by x0 minus 2h x0 has been replaced by x0 minus 2h and x1 has been replaced by x0 minus h which you can see there and x2 has been replaced by x0 which you can see over here uh, no changes over here and eta lies between uh, x0 minus 2h and uh, x0 sorry this is a x0 this is not x0 plus h so this is another formula so you can see there were three points x0 x1 x2 the first formula was at the initial point this formula is at the final point the end point so you can see x0 and x2 these are two end points and that's the reason the formulas corresponding to these points are called the end point formulas This is the first formula we derived this is the second formula we derived and this is the third formula we derived now let's do the comparison of this third formula and the first formula let's replace h by minus h what will happen this will be 1 divided by 2h with the negative sign this will become x0 plus 2h this will become x0 plus h and that will remain unchanged negative sign is outside so when i multiply negative sign this will become minus f of x naught plus 2h which coincide with that one this will become plus 4 f of x naught plus h which coincide with this one and this will become minus 3 f of x naught which coincide with this so it tells you that the first and the last formula they are the same they are the same but remember if i take just one formula this formula then i will say that i have the permission that i can replace h by minus h so when i replace h by minus h so this formula will transform to this one and when I replace h by minus h this formula will transform to the first one so i can see the first and the third formula they are equivalent to each other that's the reason i will say just one formula and this is the midpoint formula when you replace h by minus h there is no change so we concluded with two formulas for three points one formula is called three point end point formula and the other is called three point midpoint formula you are allowed to replace h by minus h whenever you need
So you need it because you saw in the last example we did that where we need a replacement of H by minus H. If the data points in forward direction are not available, then we move in backward direction. And uh, that gives you an alternate form of the formula. So inshallah, uh, I will have some examples on these formulas and that will become clear that why we need the replacement of H by minus H and how we can find out derivative of the function at the data points when function is not known. Remember these are the error terms upper bound can be obtained when the function is known. When function is not known so we will be in trouble we will not be in the position to find out upper bound of the error. But if we know the exact value, so the difference between exact and approximate gives you absolute error. That will be possible. So I think uh, uh, there is uh, just uh, the derivative of the polynomial and every student is capable of computing the derivative of a polynomial. So I can't see any problem here, but anyhow, we we'll go through the lecture. Uh, listen to me carefully and I'm sure that everything will be clear but if not clear then you can ask me again I'm telling you that do your preparation in parallel because whenever F F the institution opens so within the first week you will have examinations so I'm sure that you will not be sleeping, but you will be doing your preparations in parallel. Thank you very much.